Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up minimaps that can transition to another minimap. So I'm taking the um, the basic level that I um, showed before for showing some of the options, um, but I'm going to show you how to uh, set it up so that each one of these areas has its own minimap. So before we had one big minimap for this entire area, but now we want each of these rooms to have its to have its own minimap. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, and by the way if you look at the map name it's called map underscore adjoining areas um, I've actually removed some of the stuff for now to the side just so that I can show you how to um, how it how it's set up but if you go to the demo folder um, and you go to the maps folder it's this map here map adjoining areas and it's all set up to to work um, now so the same way that the minimap trigger should encompass the entire area of the geometry that we're concerned with, it's the exact same thing. If you wanted to um, to use a transitional minimap, so if we go into top down view, um, so again we want a minimap for each one of these four areas. So if I go in down to top down view, you see that this minimap encompasses this first kind of hallway area that we start off with, right? And you can see that the minimap, um, again, it has to be square. You can see that it's um, there's a little bit of a, a a buffer zone at the top and a little bit of a buffer zone at the top, at, sorry, at the bottom and at the top. But otherwise, this pretty much encapsulates our play space for this corridor area. Um, and if I, and so, so, so far, it's just set up the exact same way. Um, you take a 2D screenshot using the screenshot tool. Um, so you want to take a screenshot um, from this corner to this corner, put it into a um, like a 2D art program, um, and then once you've once you've traced the play space, um, and make sure that the the bounds of the mini of the image is the same as the of the minimap trigger, import it back in. So you can see I've done exactly that, and this is the minimap image right that's linked to this particular area and the level and you can see that the that the image is just this first corridor i have um these pink lines to show the transitions to the um to the next areas but again you can add it up sort of any way you want that's how i've done it um and if i run that you can see that it just works as normal so i have this uh this first area sort of drawn out but obviously if I go into another area then the minimap doesn't handle that because um, because the image only traces over this first this first area right um, now the the problem is that if I have another minimap say like if I duplicate this for example and I have another minimap um, I have another minimap here. Um, that doesn't really work because these because this minimap will encapsulate this area here as well. But this area belongs to to this minimap. So what we need to do is essentially we still need a square minimap trigger to trace our image. But then we need to add another trigger, and that's the trigger that it's actually using. Um, that sorry, that actually defines what is in that zone or not, right? So what we need to do, and this is something that I've um, kind of mentioned a couple. Of, this is where this custom areas comes into play, right? So if I um, if I go to the blueprints folder under minimap, you can see that there's this other object here called minimap bounds trigger we need one of these so if we drag this into the level um uh oh sorry no, no it's not this one it's the minimap custom area so if we drag the minimap custom area into the level you see that you, you get a blue box now this one uh, i'm just gonna hide i'm just gonna hide this minimap for now so we can see this one better this one needs to encapsulate the actual geometry that um that is that is connected to this minimap so if we want this room to um to have its own minimap then this trigger needs to cover just this room only um 
so what we need to do, if you go into the site, so this one you, doesn't have to be square because obviously this one um, can be any shape. So if we set that to, say, 2,000 um, and set that to, say, 3,000, I can't quite remember what, what it is, something like that. Let's go to top-down view. It's probably easier. Um, so maybe uh, 4,800, something like that. Yeah, 4,700. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Um, and in terms of yeah, okay. So now you can see that the trigger um, intersects half of the wall, which is perfect because the other trigger from the other rooms is going to inter is going to intersect the other half, so that they're going to be sort of touching. So if we go back to the um, perspective view, you'll see that it looks something like this. So that perfectly covers. Um, our corridor um, and then if we turn back our if we turn back our oops uh, if we turn back our uh, mini map if you go to the custom areas you add one there and as soon as you do that that will actually hide the um, the mini map it'll still show you the bounds but it will hide the opacity of the material because now this uh, custom area is, is, is more important. So if we click on the minimap again, um, we added a custom area and we want to link this uh, this blue zone to it. So if we just use that magnify, uh, that eyedropper and now this custom area, this custom area is linked to this minimap, which basically means that we're still using this trigger to create our 2D image, but it's this blue zone now that actually controls what is displayed inside it and what is so the play has to be inside this blue zone for this mini map to actually be activated right um, so if you run that um, it's not going to do anything different because we don't have any other mini map set up uh, actually that's that's something that I should um, that's something that's obvious as well right if, if I leave this zone you can see that the player is now not visible on the mini map anymore because I've left the blue area right i'm still inside i'm still inside like this area um uh sorry of the uh of the mini map so i'm still inside this area but it's now the blue area that's controlling the bounds of this mini map so um i'll show you in the next tutorial but it so for so you can essentially add as many custom areas as you want. So let's say you have a let's say you have a have room that's that's L shaped. Um, you might want to add like another one. Um, you know, you might want to you might want to like do something um, like that. So you know, you you basically want to use these triggers, and you can have as many as you want to define the shape of your. Um, of your level and then you can you can add like this one here as well right and then now this and this combined define the shape of your minimap area so let's just and you can also um, so these shapes can be either box or cylinder So uh, with cylinders and boxes, you should be able to get a pretty good re representation of of the areas that that you need. So let's uh, remove this one for now. Um, let's remove the second one. We don't need it. So that's set up for the first area. Now I'm not going to do the rest. But I'm just going to um, drag these back. So again, this is already sort of set up in this test level. Um, so you can see that these are exactly the same, right? So if I if I grab this one um, and put this back into place, you'll see that this blue area encapsulates this. Uh, space this room um, and then this mini map uh, encompasses the whole area and then this is what you're going to screenshot um, 
and bring out into your 2D program to draw over, which I've done. So this is that image for that one. And then it's the exact same thing for the other two areas. So if I grab this one, you can see that, again, we have a, um, a square that encapsulates that space and the mini map only sort of covers that region. Um, and then finally, we have the same thing for this area on the left. Um, now, I don't really need to make the blue zone cover this area exactly. It's kind of okay overlapping it with these corners because you can't reach there anyway. But let's say that the player can actually stand here, like in this region here. Then in that case, obviously, you will have to match the blue zone exactly to the geometry of this sort of cross, um, like this cross kind of style geometry, right? Because if someone stands there, as it is now, they're going to basically be treated like they're inside this room, which they're obviously not because they're outside, right? But for this purposes, it's um, it's 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 fine. In the next video, I'm going to show you like a room within a room, um, and in that case, the uh, these blue zones is going to match exactly like the shape of the room. So that's all you have to do. Um, if I run this now, you'll see that when I go from uh, this minimap to that minimap, for to that to that zone, this is like a new. This is using a new minimap. Um, I'll run back. This will be like a th this minimap, and same thing for this area. So this is triggering another minimap, and then if I go back, it will trigger the corridor minimap again, right? And same thing for that zone there, but I won't won't bother going there. So that's how you set up um, adjoining areas. So again, you um, you still you still need the actual minimap object because you need that to go into top down view um, and um, and trace your minimap over the area that you need, which is this area for the corridor. But then you're going to add one of these blue zones, which is BP minimap custom area. And that is actually going to define your um, your actual playable walkable zone for that minimap. And you can add as many of these as you want. Um, and then when you transition, when you move from one to the next, the minimap will just update. Um, and each minimap can have its own style so for example if i want a square minimap here and i want a circle one here um you know you can certainly do that so if i go to uh, minimap 2 i believe i can set that to a square so if you look so the minimap is a circle on the top right if i go into this zone it turns into a square minimap so you can have um different settings for different um for different areas uh, so that's it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to show you how to set up a minimap zone within a minimap zone. For example, you have like a big city and you go into a shop in that city, you can transition to a, to a different minimap. And then when you, when you come out of it, it will automatically transition back into the city minimap. So that's the next video. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching.